Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me on the launch pad with a space shuttle. And this is, well, it's totally stock, and the the important thing about this space shuttle is it's like the American model. I've seen a lot of people designing the Buran models, where you put the big engine on the uh, on the on the main fuel tank, and that makes it a lot easier. That's a cop out. That's not that's not really space shuttling. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I, I've been working on this for a little while, and this is a pretty crude prototype, actually. You can see there's nothing covering the engine plates, and it actually still can't return, because I built this pretty quickly last night. Um, yeah, really easy somehow. Don't really know how. But anyway, uh, yeah, I probably will include this for download, I think it- oh no, it doesn't have Mac Jeb on it, so yeah, I will. Um, but yeah, when you launch, you just kind of throttle down a little bit, so it doesn't, uh, push forward towards the VAP too much and then as it kind of as as it kind of leans backwards you just kind of throttle up a little more and then just kind of cruise because this is totally stable this is no input from me really um <clears throat> yeah i think this is absolutely no input because if you do then the SAS gets all messed up and it all just falls apart so yeah um but right now the uh boosters are getting a little lighter everything's getting a little lighter and the boosters are actually forcing it over backwards that is intended um, now it's gonna just kind of tip over a little more as the boosters burn out. Uh, but it won't go unstable because it's designed very well by a very smart man. Uh, <laughs> no, it was designed by me. Um, and let's just ditch those boosters. Almost clip off the wings, but not not this time. And you'll notice that on this shuttle the uh, tank probably looks a little smorter, smaller than on the real shuttle. That's because this is a much denser fuel. I think it's more like... RP-1, I want to say, an oxidizer, as opposed to the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen of the space shuttle, um, which is very low density. But, yeah. Anyway, um, this is using pretty much the same setup as the, uh, the shuttle in terms of engines. It's got three uh, of those Rockamax uh, Poodle, no, not Poodle, Skipper engines, which do the job very nicely, give it a lot of thrust. Um, and they're actually tilted at a 15 degree angle, much like the uh, old shuttle I built a long time ago with B9 parts in Solar Civilization. But yeah, uh, because they can only gimbal about one and a half degrees, um, you kind of want them tilted so that they'll stay roughly through the center of mass. And the easy way to do this sort of thing is just to cover it in reaction wheels. I haven't done that. I do have two reaction wheels. I have one on the tank and one in the shuttle, and they are both the big reaction wheels. So I do have quite a lot of torque, but I'm impressed at how... Uh, little reaction wheels I use, how few reaction wheels I used. Um, but yeah, now it's just a matter of getting our apple wapses out of the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, this is, the reason for having this is it has a really big cargo bay, because I always built it with the smaller parts, but that's such a small cargo bay, it's not really useful for anything. But this could be useful for, um, like, big probes, fueling, station building, the deep space YouTuber station building, if anyone involved in that is listening, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> But yeah, right now it's actually only carrying about um, a four, five ton payload. It's just carrying a little fuel, it was just kind of a test. Um, but because it's such a heavy vehicle, it doesn't really need... Um, it's not... if you put like five tons in the cargo bay, it doesn't really matter where you put it, but it's best to put it relatively near the middle, because then the mass stays relatively central. Um, it's also carrying some secondary payloads, because it has such a big cargo bay. And we are just... Uh, but now we're just going to cruise out of the atmosphere, upside down, of course, much like the real shuttle launch. That is because uh, this way the um, yeah, the crew are subjected to positive G-forces on ascent as opposed to negative G-forces. So they're pushed into their seat rather than pulled out of their seat. That would be pretty horrible, being pulled out of your seat for um, <laughs> for, a, for a launch to orbit, even if it is Kerbal Space Program. It only takes about four minutes, but, you know. Anyway, now we're out of atmosphere, it's just a matter of throttling up a little bit and pointing um, 15 degrees below the horizon so that my engines are pointing along the horizon. Because if you remember, they have a 15 degree tilt um, to, against the axis of the spacecraft. So yeah, um, I will use the fuel to the, the fuel in the main tank to take me all the way to orbit, even though I probably should let it burn up in the atmosphere and use my orbital maneuvering system to go... Uh, the rest of the way, but it's, I don't care about space junk, this is the only thing I have in orbit on this save, until I have like hundreds of shuttles flying around, because when I build something like this, I pretty much just keep launching it, not doing anything, just just really satisfying, um, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm very sad, but it's, uh, I just, I, I don't know, I was very proud of this, I was like, I'm, uh, last night I was like, I'm gonna build a shuttle, I'm just gonna make a, like, a dirty per prototype this time, and I'll work on it some other day. Made two prototypes, then made this. Yeah, I know. I don't. I've n never been able to crack it before.
don't know what changed. Um, maybe just commitment, maybe not actually paying attention to the center of thrust marker. That was wrong. Um, but yeah, anyway, we are almost in orbit, and we are now in orbit. There we go. We've taken our payload to orbit. That's a shuttle to orbit. An American shuttle without one of those big dumb uh, engines on it. Take that, everybody who builds Burans. <laughs> anyway, let's ditch this, although I'm sure their Burans could return. This is obviously an early prototype, and it still can't return, as I've said. But um, I will make it able to return. That's quite an easy bit to do once you've got... The hard bit is getting it to orbit without the big engine. You'll also notice it has, it, you'll also notice it has a massive tailplane. That's because I just wanted to use the shuttle tailplane. Um, now I'm using, well, those are the RCS engines, or my orbital maneuvering system, because on the real shuttle, it, the fuel for um, RCS and the orbital maneuvering system were the same, so I thought I would, you know, follow suit. Anyway, you can see my payload, I've got a small fuel tank, about 4.5 tons, and four CubeSats! I know, I didn't, I didn't go exactly all out on this, but, you know, I, I was just working with some smaller payloads. I think I could probably do 10 tons at this point, and I'm gonna upgrade it to, you know, um do some more tonnage, just just lots of tons. Uh, <laughs> I'd like it to be able to take kind of 20 tons to orbit at some point, which I think will require a bigger fuel tank, um, some more boosters, that sort of thing. Anyway, let's uh, deploy my cube satellites, obviously all Kerbal student projects, they were all just, you know, well, uh, I don't know, some of them will be Kerbal, I don't know, just some sort of storyline about these CubeSats, but look at them disappear from the spacecraft, I think it's really cool. Now, I did actually record me trying to uh, get it back to the uh, runway, although it didn't go very well, and the footage corrupted, because I apparently think that using Bandicam is still a good idea, which I don't know why I still do that, maybe because the file sizes are small. Um, so, I'm yeah, I'm sorry about that, but I will keep working on this, and once I actually have it able to land, I will record that, and you'll be all like, oh my god, it went all the way back to the ground, and that means we get our engines back, and that means it's cost-effective, right guys? Like, the space shuttle was cost of Oh, wait, no, it was really uncost-effective. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this has been the KSP with Tape. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.